Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and welcome to our early autumn update on our deep bed that we've got in our allotment. If you're not already a subscriber to Learn How To Garden, the link's just below the video. It's just the cost of your email address, that means we can then keep you up to date every time we post one of our videos, which are a couple of times a week, uh, and it also means that you get our monthly newsletter. What we're looking at here is a deep bed, like I say, we created in under 30 minutes earlier in the year, and we've never ever dug this bed. And it's an early autumn update, and I, if we just run through what we've got in, we've had lots of salads out of here, we've had some great beetroot, some great broad beans, but we want to get it rolling through the autumn. So the first thing we've put down this end of the bed are kales. And the reason I love kales, if you've got a small space, one of the brassicas that will get you through the winter bed than others are kales, and this is red bull kale here, or Cavello Nero, which is the uh, black Tuscan kale. And what's great about kales is that you pick the leaves like you'd pick salad leaves. So you can come out and pick as many as you need. Uh, make great pasta sauces, great as a cabbage substitute. As you can see, we've got quite a few little holes in the kale. That's because we've had quite a mild autumn and we've got a lot of cabbage white butterflies around. Uh, in fact, I pick up under here, I probably, can get a caterpillar. Now I'm probably going to have to come forward to the camera so you can see how tiny this is. That tiny little green speck is the actual devil that's biting all the holes in my kale and my cabbage. That is a small caterpillar from a cabbage white butterfly. What I suggest you do is look under the leaves if you've got holes and just squish him. It's the best thing to do. Better than chemicals. So as a vegetarian that murders animals, as we've just seen, um, but I'm sort of keener on the kale than I am on the caterpillars. Coming forward, this is um, us French beans. We've had a terrible year with beans, all of our beans. These got eaten by uh, some rabbits. The tops got taken out by some rabbits. On one of our updates, I think we showed you, hence why we now have monster rabbit fence behind the actual allotment. But we are starting to get some glorious, glorious French beans. These are my son Ben's absolute favourite vegetable. We sauté these with some fresh garlic and some olive oil and he calls them squeaky beans because they're so nice to eat. They squeak as you eat them. And we'll get quite a few picks off here and we'll continue picking this until the first frosts. So even though they're late, we're still getting a pick of beans, so never give up. You know, you've still got time. If you've got beans, leave them in the garden, let them keep going. The other thing I'd say about beans is if you've got some beans, once you've sown beans, remember that our grandparents always used to keep their bean seeds year to year. Uh, and we'll be talking about seed saving sort of in the autumn, but Beans, if you're going to start saving seeds, the first thing you can really start with. But to be honest, none of these French beans are going to get saved because they're all going to get eaten at this size. So with very little effort, you've got a pick of beans. These aren't anything like the ones they're flying in from Kenya. These are crisp, these are sweet, and these really snap. So no effort whatsoever. This no-dig bed is the most effortless way you can grow. And there'll be three or four picks like this before the autumn. And it's great, isn't it, to be getting these really fresh beans. We're sort of 16th of September. They are absolutely superb. And just in front of them, we've got some winter cabbage. I don't plant a lot of cabbage because it's a small space, but I do think there is, you know, it's nice to have a really good, nice, fresh cabbage with your Sunday lunch occasionally. Uh, one that you can just go out and pick your own. And these are planted quite close together to actually constrain their growth. So we actually get them uh, that the size we can use rather than a monster one. And in front of those, these leaves here that are starting to come over, these are actual sort of endives. These are a salad that we will be able to sort of crop into the winter. Um, 
Some of the outside leaves are looking a bit ropey and we just take those off because it's the center that we want to grow and sort of get harder. Uh, so that it's that beautiful sort of red centered sort of scariole the endive. We've then got choux de brem, which is uh, like turnip tops, which we can crop these leaves, stir fry them. Uh, don't really taste like turnips. They're a sort of a very in individual taste. I really, really like them. And finally, parsley, which we've been uh, cropping now for the best part of three months, taking leaves again off the outside edge, eating a lot of them with just tomatoes and parsley, really. Uh, but I suspect now we might be making some parsley sauces uh, as it goes into the autumn and we start to start to get more of cream into your diet, sort of, you know. I think as it starts to get colder, you need a bit heavier food, really. Well, I certainly do. So that's the no-dig bed on the second week of September. I think it looks great. When these beans come out, uh, if we don't have anything we can pop in, we would probably put in a, a green manure. But what I suspect we'll be putting in here is either some garlic for next year or some Japanese overwintering onions. Thanks a lot for watching, Learn How to Garden. I hope you're enjoying this series on our no-dig bed. It's what Betty uses in her 10-minute garden in her vegetable potager. Uh, someone asked me what a potager means really. It's just a, um, an ornamental vegetable garden is how the French would describe it. And my mom's 10 minute garden is an ornamental vegetable garden that she spends no more than 10 minutes a day in. So if you haven't watched any of the 10 minute gardener ones on Betty's garden, worth a look. Uh, if you actually want to watch any of the videos where my mom's talking about her philosophy on gardening, that's also worth a look. So. With that blatant plug for listening to what my mom has to say about gardening, I'll say bye for now and thanks a lot for watching us at learnhowtogarden.com.